My name is Mike Mulvihill, and I travelled to Selton Hill to speak with James Flynn's son, Paddy Flynn, and Paddy's wife, Margaret, to document the Selton Hill ambush story. It all started at six in the morning, and we arrived here around six, half six, and they had refreshments, they rested, and after that they were getting ready for this ambush down at Eden Tinney. That was where it was supposed to take place. Not This place was only a, a resting spot for them, but it was a very open place. And it went on then that they had two people down next door, two, two, two volunteers, Patrick Cooking, P. McDermott. They were watching next door because they were Protestants. And they just thought maybe they might be anxious to pass on word if they knew anything was happening, but no, nobody was sure. So that went on till about, I suppose, two or three o'clock. They were kind of ready then, you know what I mean, to go to Eden Tinney. And they would have had more refreshments here at that stage. So early on, my father, James Flynn, he told them this wasn't a very safe place to be because it was too open and the fact that we had a house here beside us and across the lake and they could see them times you didn't have the, the amount of hedges and bushes that you have to over there. So my uncle Charlie was here then and Aunt Bridget my father was the, out across the road helping a man load a plough onto a cart where he was going to do a bit of plough when he was borrowing it here and it was, it was good for him because he was out there when it started so it was from there on then there was a one gun just set up just down the road from our entrance there at the moment a new guns and another one up here at the entrance to the McCullough's house. My uncle Charlie, he was out on the street. He heard, actually, the trucks coming. And he came into the house and he told them, he says, the Black and Tans are on their way and they're, they're setting up, they're, they're yeah. after stopping at the road. Uh, the on troops the had arrived you and see, they were setting up at, on the road. Yes. Yeah. The pair of men below at the house, well, they were away a bit now and you, would, you, you wouldn't have much time. Well, they weren't going to come up here to tell them that those troops... See, they must have been resting or something here again, you know what I mean? Mm. Uh, at this stage, or maybe having food, I don't know. But it came, it came on them by surprise, mm -hmm. totally surprised. Barney Sweeney, at that time, he got into a drain which was towards the lake, a river that's there, and they didn't see him, and they were quite close to him two or three times because he was nothing but his head appeared you know, with water, you know what I mean? And he escaped, but he... He went right, he followed that drain, then away from the lake, like on around the boat, to a safe place now. It just started, they ran out the back here. Ah, look at it was, as we, as we said, it was like shooting ducks in a pond. That's what it was like. Because they didn't have guns and things weren't that powerful and... It wouldn't have that much ammunition, ammunition yeah. as such, you know. So the whole thing would be over in, 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 in about a half hour. Now, Jack Hunt was one of the people, the volunteers, got injured in the... He was wounded in the first part of it, maybe in the first ten minutes. And McPartlin, he made his escape route from below and he got away up past Murphy's, 
he got through a drain because it was deep drained and he went out the hills by the lake, Selton Lake. Mikey Eddie Heron spoke to me about Andy McPartland and his visit to their home. He met it he met it across the field. To, to our place. Yeah. I had a hub in the head. And that was uh, And who would I'm have been there at that time? Your mother and I, father? I Ned here no, and Mrs. Heron. My father left him across the hills. Across Grey Law. There's a big lake. Big lake between the whole land. Laura Lake. A big lake. Across the long hills and across the river and, and back into Fener. Yeah. And then how it worked out that I don't know. And did he... Like st- to Foxfield. And did he stay long in your house then? Was no, it- not that I know. No. A couple of hours, right. Yeah. I, 